Hi and welcome to another tutorial from Homs. Today we're looking at the top tools that you must know if you plan to use motion graphic design in Blender. This is a motion graphic essential series and in this series we'll be looking at 10 tools but for this episode of this series we're going to be focusing on the first one which is shape keys. Shape keys the most trusted tool that I've used in motion graphic design over the years. I don't think there's a project I've ever created that doesn't use shape keys in some form or manner and I know it will be an excellent tool to add to your arsenal for motion graphic design needs if you don't already use it and even if you do there are some tools and tips in this tutorial that you may not have known about for shape keys that you can add or use for your project needs. So let's get into it okay so we have our default cube here and our default scene here and we're going to be using this cube to represent the functions of shape keys so the first thing is where to find shape keys now shape keys can be found for your mesh under the data panel and you can find it on the vertex groups for shape keys but shape keys are also applicable to both shapes and curves so if we go ahead and create a curve right here and uh, let's create a bezier curve quickly just put the bezier curve here cool and we go to our data panel if we go ahead and just go to the bottom here we'll find shape keys now shape key functionality is limited in the curve options in the curve tool or the curve objects rather it has better and more options in the mesh but it's still you can still utilize it in on curves cool so with that in mind let's go ahead and select our mesh go to the shape the uh, data panel and go to shape keys and we're greeted with a shape key panel it's the same for both mesh and curve so shape keys essentially just means shape deformation keyframe that's what it means right or you can call it shape deform keyframe and all it is is a uh, a function or a tool that stores the information of a deformation of our shape right as a state initially in the default of the um, opening of shape keys the states are saved in a value of zero and one, where zero is the original shape and one is the new shape that's been deformed. So let's take a look at that. If we press plus on our button here, we get the first shape key. And the first shape key in default is the basis. And the basis is basically the base shape, the original shape. And the basis is what um, the relative uses to calculate all keyframes from here, all shape keys that are added from this point on. So if we add a second shape key, we get key one, and we added key one, key two, key three, key four, um, key four um, consecutively. Good. And every key is a new shape that we can deform to, and every new shape that we deform to is relative to the original base shape. Cool, so let's go ahead and do that. If we press tab and go to edit mode and we go to our vertices and just press G and Z. Oh, sorry, not G and Z, sorry, G and Y. Um, even though you can do G and Z, but let's do G and Y here. We see that we have a new shape. Now, with our key selected and we make the shape change in edit mode, the key will register or store the data of the new deform shape so when i come out of edit mode we notice it goes back to the original shape right that's because now the new shape is stored in this value slider in the basis we don't have the value slider but in the key one we do and what this does is that this slides from zero to one where zero is the original shape and one is the new deform shape so if we slide it we can see it does this good so what the slider enables us to do is to interpolate between the two shapes and the interpolation is pretty linear. We can change um, the type of interpolation in terms of the animation, but in terms of how the keyframes are calculated in between, they take the straightest path to the new deform shape. Cool. So this is just a regular example. Cool. So we can go ahead and do a couple of things with this now. 
we don't necessarily have to use the range min here right we don't have to use 0 to 1 we can change the range from say 0 to 2 and in this instance now the value slider completes its trans this deformation when it reaches 2 see here so the deformation changes good when it reaches 2 and what it will do is that if you change the range midway the animation it will calculate what would happen if we continue this deformation along the same so you can see it's slightly longer than what we had before right so which is advisable that you do your range change before you add any animation cool and we can see it here cool All right so with using shape keys now we have a couple more options that we can take a look at All right for one we do not have to use relative so i'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this with so y we can use absolute in the sense that not every shape that is calculated is calculated in reference to the basis good so if we create a new shape key here now and we give it a different property say we say g um z bring it down now to here this this new key will be calculated from this old one from the from the prior key not the basis so if we slide the evolution time because we don't have a value slider because we don't have a range anymore we can see how it animates here so it animates from one key to the next see that good where when it's relative um, to the original basis all keys are calculated from the original shape or from the base shape so we don't have to use relative either we can also set vertex groups this is particularly useful for bones but because this is about animation um, we're not going to be utilizing this right now cool and we can say what it's relative to too so we don't have to use the basis relative we can use the first key or the second key as relative awesome So let's go back to our original cube so we have this first key now if we go down to this drop down menu we see some options and the first option we see is new shape from mix so what happens is that we may have a situation where we have an animation or we have a shape key and that shape key is for so to speak created and we can see it here but we don't want the but we actually want a, a new shape key from the in-between state that's being interpolated so we don't want it at the end and just the beginning we want a shape key in the middle here so to do that we use the first option which is new shape from mix and that will create a new shape here we have keyframe three let's call it mix and what this will do now is that this will have a state here of the keyframe that's mixed that's the mix of what we had it there as a value slider so we can see here now that this only slides to where this keyframe was when we applied the mix and so we have a new shape key from the interpolated state of the first shape key cool we can do a bit more now let's go down drop down menu and let's take a look at mirror now this is more for bones so we're going to look at the first one the topology one too is exactly the same but more for bones and what we're going to do here is that we're going to create a new key and okay, then so we have this value here along the x-axis here and what the mirror will do will mirror the cube on the x-axis so let's go ahead and apply the mirror modifier here or the mirror um, option here and we can see it mirrors it on the x-axis this is really for bones but you may find some utility for motion graphic design so if we're going to go to the next one here i'm going to look at join shape keys and transfer shape keys and for this i'm going to go ahead and just enable the statistics and the statistics on the top left gives us the information about our object so we see the objects were selected one and vertices and the one we're focused most on is vertices Cool. So the vertices here, what we're going to do is that to apply these both both of these operations, which is join and transfer, we have to make sure that the object that we're 
I'm referring to has the same vertex count as the one that we're transferring the shape keys or joining the shape keys from. So if we select vertex option here, I select all of these, we have eight. So we need another object that has eight. So let's go ahead and just do that. Just gonna go ahead and let's delete one of these. Let's delete that one and keep this one. Uh, let's go ahead and add a new cube. I'm um, gonna add a cube. I'll just put GY so we can separate them. Uh, let's go ahead and navigate to our modifiers and add a deform modifier, simple deform. So I'm just gonna use the default, which is this twist. You can see the twist here. Now this cube and this cube have the same vertices. They have the same eight vertices. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. Cool. And then we go to the vertices here. Cool, for this new shape, we're gonna select this one and select our shape that we want to transfer to. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit join as shapes. And what this is going to do is join, create a new keyframe and it's going to join the deformation of this shape to this one. So if we go ahead and slide the value, we see we have the exact same shape. Mind you, this only works if the vertices are the same. Cool. Let's look at transfer shape keys that operate in a very similar way. So this is join. Let's just go ahead and type join. And let's create transfer. So we're gonna create another cube here. Um, cube here, cool. And we're gonna go to simple deform again. Um, let's just change it up though. Let's not use twist, let's use bend. And we can see the simple deform here, bending it. And we're gonna apply this as a shape key. And this is another thing about shape keys is that many operations like the wave and the curve and such that do deformation will give you the option to um, apply it as a shape key. Cool, so we're gonna apply it as a shape key now. So if we go over to the mesh, we see simple deform shape key. And we have the option here. Cool. So what we're gonna do, we select this one and then select the shape that we want to transfer the shape key to, and we're gonna go ahead, transfer shape key. Once it has the same amount of vertex or vertices or the same vertice, vertex count, you should see that it transfers the shape nicely and we see the same shape here. Cool. We go ahead and press tab and unpin this a bit and we see the shape. Awesome. Cool. And then that is the options. We can also delete all shape keys, apply all shape keys and move to the top and to the bottom. Cool, and that gives us those options. Now, if we want to now, let's take a look at some other things here. This, these operations here for shape keys is independent of the pivot point. And what do we mean by that? Let's go ahead and select this pivot point, hit Shift and S, and we're gonna say, um, Cursor to selected, I'm gonna say, go to this one now with it selected, and I'm gonna say object, set origin to 3D cursor. So if we change the origin point of this animation point here, we see that the deformation is not dependent on the origin point. And this is essential, right? Because it means that we can do many complex animations with the shape key without having to worry about the origin point affecting its animation as it does for many operations in Blender. So that's something to keep in mind. Cool. And this is the shape key tutorial concluded. If you enjoyed the tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Um, shape keys are awesome. Hashtag shape keys are awesome and I highly recommend this tool. In the next tutorial that we talk about the top 10 tools, we'll go to the curve modifier, another one of my favorites and another OD. Cool. So until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design a new dawn. Later.